Hello everybody, in this video we are going to talk about security.txt. What is it? What are the benefits? The downsides? How you can easily create your own security.txt file and how to make the best of it if you are a pen tester or bounty hunter. Without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so what exactly is a security.txt file? It is a proposed standard that allows websites to define security policies and sets clear guidelines for security researchers on how to report security issues. You can think of it as the equivalent of robots or ads.txt but for security issues. And you may ask, but why do we need this in the first place? And this is a valid question. Every year, security researchers identify thousands of new vulnerabilities and misconfigurations and they most of the time want to report them so the company or developer can fix them. And here comes the fun part. To report the problem, you have to first find the right person to report it to. You don't want to report security issues to sales or customer support because they wouldn't know what to do with them. So having clear guidelines to where to report the issues is of tremendous help for pen testers, bounty hunters and security researchers. Even though this standard was first proposed in 2017, it is still in the final stages as an internet draft. However, it has already been adopted by major companies such as Google, Facebook, GitHub, LinkedIn, Dropbox and is being recommended for use throughout US and UK government agencies as well. On the screen we have Adobe's security txt file which can be found at adobe.com slash well-known slash security txt. And here we have all the things we need to properly report a security issue. We know who to contact, their preferred languages, their security policy, the PGP or pretty good privacy signature for secure communication and so on. So, as you can see, having a security.txt file greatly simplifies the process of reporting a security vulnerability because you know who you need to report to and what guidelines you need to follow for your report to be valid. Okay, now let's have a look at the structure of this file. First of all, let's check out the URL. We can see that the file is placed under the well-known directory, but it can also be placed at the root directory of a website or even in both locations at the same time. Now let's have a look at the contents. The security.txt file is formatted as lines of key value pairs separated by columns where the key is a field name. And there are currently eight fields defined. Acknowledgements are links to a web page where people can be recognized for their reports. Canonical lists the canonical URI of the security.txt file and it can be useful when someone obtains the security.txt file through means other than directly accessing the location. Contact is a required field that provides information on uh, where to report vulnerabilities such as email address, a phone number or a web page with contact information. You can have more than one contact field if you need to. Encryption locates an encryption key that should be used for secure communication when reporting security issues. Expires is also a required field that indicates when the data in the file should be considered stale and no longer used. The date can be as far in the future as you wish, but it's recommended to be less than a year into the future. Hiring are links to a web page on security related job positions at the organization. Policy provides the location of the organization's vulnerability disclosure policy. And finally, preferred languages enumerates the languages that the organization would prefer used when submitting security reports. And one more thing, the security.txt file should have an internet media type of text plane and it must be served over HTTPS. Now that we are familiar with the purpose and structure of the security.txt file, let's see how we can easily create one for ourselves. Of course, you can go ahead and right click create a new file and add some content and call it a day. But if you want to adopt this proposed standard, you should take into account its rules. So to make this job easier, go to securitytxt.org and generate your own standard compliant content. Here you'll find an easy to complete form with all the fields that are currently available. When you finish completing the desired fields, press the generate button and then just copy and paste the content into your security.txt file. And that's all. 
Next up, I want to show you a nice way to take advantage of the security TXT file if you're doing bug bounties. Go to your favorite search engine, mine happens to be Brave Search, and search for the following query. This is going to find all the websites that have the security TXT file. So now you have many targets that a lot of people don't know about or that a lot of hackers don't focus their attention on. And I think this can be a nice addition to your hacking tools and I hope it will bring you some great rewards. All right, now that we've talked about the benefits of the security TXT file, let's turn the page and talk about its disadvantages. Every disadvantage I'm going to mention has already been described in the official documentation, so if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the captions. Okay, so the first downside people complain about is the spam and useless reports they receive shortly after the security TXT file has been made public. This is because there are a lot of script kiddies that are sending automated reports, most of them being close to useless, and if you want to have a conversation with such people, you'll find that it's just a waste of time because they have no idea how to help you fix the security issue. So you'll probably end up hating yourself for adding the security TXT file, but this shouldn't be the case because you can mitigate the spam by implementing email filters which will reduce the number of spam emails you're gonna receive. Another downside would be that most people who see that you have a security TXT would assume that your organization is providing permission to do security testing against your services or products. This might result in increased testing against your organization's infrastructure that can lead to certain problems. But on the other hand, if you don't have a security TXT, people would assume your organization doesn't accept security reports. So to avoid confusion, make sure to add your company's vulnerability disclosure policy as we mentioned earlier. One last disadvantage I'm gonna mention is compromised files and incident response. An attacker that has compromised a website is able to compromise the security TXT file as well. This can result in security reports not being received by the organization or even worse, they could be sent to the attacker instead. So to protect against this, you should use the canonical field to indicate the locations of the file, digitally sign the file and do a checkup on the file from time to time to detect tampering. Alright, that's all I had to say about the security TXT file. If I miss something, please do let me know in the comment section and uh, also let me know if you already have a security TXT file for a website or if you are going to create one in the future. I hope the information I've shared in this video has helped you better understand what security TXT is and how we can use it to our advantage to report security issues. And for the bug hunters out there, this file can make your job easier when it comes to find potential targets to reap some juicy rewards. I was Carol, until next time.